Good evening. It's been a presidential visit that's broken all the diplomatic rules. Donald Trump has emerged from his talks with Theresa May in Chequers, hailing her leadership skills and declaring that the relationship between Britain and America is the highest level of special. This was a matter of hours after he'd attacked Mrs May's approach to Brexit and warned that her plans for trade with the EU would kill the chances of a deal with the US, though he then appeared to soften that view today. At Chequers, he repeated his assertion that immigration had caused major problems for Europe and that Brexit was happening because of concerns about levels of migration. Our first report this evening on this rather eventful presidential visit is by our political editor, Laura Kunzberg. You don't need to count the helicopters to know how much this visitor matters. President Trump's entourage blasted through the countryside as subtly as he warned this week that his host might not get the trade deal she covets. For Theresa May, her job was not just to grin and bear it today, but more importantly, to try to change his mind. When first the tricky question was asked, he left it to her. Yeah, have you had a chance to talk about the interview this morning? The question repeated, this time he made a face rather than an answer. But after talks back to the choreography around the stately home, exactly where she brokered her Brexit compromise this time last week. The Prime Minister appeared to have taken hold of President Trump and predicted he's now on her side. We agreed today that as the UK leaves the European Union, we will pursue an ambitious US-UK free trade agreement. The Chequers agreement reached last week provides the platform for Donald and me to agree an ambitious deal that works for both countries right across our economies. Was he quite so convinced? Once the Brexit process is concluded and perhaps the UK has left the EU, I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever you do is OK with me. That's your decision. <laughs> whatever you're going to do is OK with us. Just make sure we can trade together. That's all that matters. Mr. President, you seem rather to have changed your tune from what you said earlier this week when you said that on the current Brexit plan, that would probably kill the possibility of a trade deal with the UK. Our countries are meant to have a special relationship, yet you publicly criticised the Prime Minister's policy and her personally for not listening to you this week. Is that really the behaviour of a friend? I didn't criticise uh, the Prime Minister. I have a lot of respect for the Prime Minister. And um, unfortunately, there was a story that was done uh, which was, you know, generally fine, but it didn't put in what I said about the Prime Minister, and I said tremendous things. To be accurate, it did. Uh, she's going to make a decision as to what she's going to do. The only thing I ask of Teresa is that we make sure we can trade, that we don't have any restrictions. I read reports where that won't be possible, but I believe after speaking with the Prime Minister's people and representatives and trade experts, it will absolutely be possible. And, Prime Minister, isn't the problem for you that some th of the things Mr Trump has said about your Brexit plan are right? It will limit the possibilities of doing trade deals easily in the future. There will be no limit to the possibility of us doing trade deals around the rest of the world once we leave the European Union on the basis of the agreement that, I, that was made here at Chequers and that I've put forward to the European Union. And as you've heard from the President, the United States is keen for us, we're keen to work with them, and uh, we will do a trade deal with them and with others around the rest of the world. He said he'd suggested she should be tougher on Brexit, but never pull the plug on the deal. And that Brexit is a very tough situation. That's a tough deal. Well, you can't walk away because if she walks away, that means she's, she's stuck. Can't walk away. Uh, but you can do other things. Now, what about that oft-quoted special, uh, if today, uh, surreal relationship? I would say the highest level of special. Now, am I allowed to go? Am I allowed to go higher than that? I'm not sure. But it's the highest level of special. I would much rather have her as my friend than my enemy. That I can tell you. And we are friends. Where he leads, the Prime Minister is certainly not always willing to follow. But had the President not calmed his tone on Brexit, this vital moment would have been humiliating. For years, British Prime Ministers have strained to show that they matter to the United States. They want to be listened to, they want to be respected. But with characteristic smash and grab style, Donald Trump has made that tricky, very tricky for Theresa May, just at the moment when she needs friends and reliable allies. Goodbye to Chequers, 
then for the president to move to call on one of the few people in the world whose status rivals his. The Queen has now met a dozen American presidents. This spectacle a product of all that shared history. These images, perhaps the ones Donald Trump truly desired. But the politics between the United States and Britain are fraught, the lines less precise. And as both our countries change, so diplomatic decorum isn't guaranteed. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Checkers. So where does this leave us? In a moment, we'll be talking to our North America editor, John Sopel, who's at Windsor. Uh, but first, let's talk to Laura, Laura Kunzberg, who's at Checkers. And Laura, it really doesn't matter how effusive he was today, does it? Because the tensions and the differences are still there. Well, the awkwardness was on display, despite the fact that President Trump did roll back from what were very clear criticisms of Theresa May. Checkers is always a bit of a parallel universe to the normal rough and tumble of Westminster politics. Throw President Trump into that mix and you had really what seemed at times a really surreal alternative reality. But on that central question of whether or not the US is up for a trade deal after Brexit, the change in tone from Donald Trump was absolutely vital to Downing Street. Yes, he still expressed reservations. He's clearly still worried about the kind of Brexit deal the UK might get. But the change in his language was absolutely crucial for number 10 to have secured today. Because remember, her Brexit compromise, which curiously by coincidence was brokered here with the cabinet just seven days ago, is the most important political project for Theresa May. And to have the most powerful leader in the Western world saying that it's not workable, it's not realistic, was a very damaging criticism hanging over her. And the fact that President Trump has rolled back somewhat is something that Downing Street will be greatly relieved at. But I think at this moment, when Theresa May is facing so many difficulties on all sides, the fact even that that support seemed rather qualified is a problem they can't just walk away from. Laura, thanks. Let's go to John, John Sopel, who's at uh, Windsor Castle for us. This phrase, John, the highest level of special, what do you read into that and does it actually mean something? Well, I'm, look, the British Prime Ministers love it when an American president talks about just how special the relationship is. Is it special? It's super special. And Donald Trump used the phrase, the highest level of special. But you judge things not by words, but by actions. And I thought that we shouldn't underestimate the significance of the gap between what Donald Trump gave uh, in the interview he said to the Sun newspaper and what he said in that news conference that we were just hearing from Laura about. Donald Trump doesn't tend to do reverse thrust. He doesn't tend to do U-turns, but he scaled back his language, particularly on the trade issue. He heaped and lavished praise on Theresa May. And something that I never thought I would hear, he said he apologised to her uh, for the remarks that he made in the Sun newspaper. That augurs well, but trade is still going to be the big ticket issue. On other things like defence and intelligence, yes, there is a special relationship there. But if you look at some of the big ticket items that in the past Theresa May, Emmanuel Macron, Angela Merkel, the allies if you like, have tried to get Donald Trump to change his mind on the Iran nuclear deal, climate change, NATO, they haven't had a whole lot of success. Donald Trump will always go his own way. It looked like this was all careering off the tracks after that interview he gave the Sun newspaper. At the kind of news conference today, well, they somehow seem to get it back on the tracks. John, many thanks again. John Sopel at Windsor Castle and Laura Kinsberg for us at uh, Checkers. Well, uh, across the UK today, tens of thousands of people have taken to the streets to protest uh, against uh, President Trump's visit. Uh, protests right across the UK um, right now in London, especially thousands of people spending the day marching through the streets of central London, heading for Trafalgar Square, where we can join our special correspondent, Lucy Manning, who's there. Well, President Trump might have hoped to have thousands lining the street for his first visit as president here to the UK, but this isn't what he would have had in mind. Every corner of Trafalgar Square is filled up now. This is, as you can hear, a massive crowd. 
protest. It has been a massive protest through the day. It has been a good humoured protest, but it has been one with a real sense of outrage. Say it loud, say it clear, Donald Trump's not welcome here. His name echoed round the streets of London. It was on the posters they carried, the t-shirts they wore. They were loud and they were certainly many, but as tens of thousands came to protest against President Trump, he wasn't even in the city to see or hear the anger. The relationship normally a special one, the highest level of special, said the president, but they weren't lining the streets for the American president, but against him. I think his policies are awful. I think the way he talks to people, the way he talks about women, the way he talks about disabled people, the policies on climate change, the list of things he does wrong is long. You're, less you're not going to stop Trump, are you? I think peaceful protest is a beautiful thing. What do you make of so many British people coming out against your president? It's really nice that they care that much, yeah, about the injustices happening in our country. The day of protest started with London's newest tourist attraction, flying outside Parliament, the Trump baby balloon. Not huge in size, but big in impact. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a, an epitome of British humour, really, and I think Trump doesn't get that. Uh, but I think it stands for the way that we deal with things we don't like. Then this peculiarly British day of protest took to the streets, the Women's March starting the demonstrations, armed with song, pots and pans, wit and anger. He is the worst thing to happen to the world right now. I have a daughter, I am a mother, I am a woman. I, he, he is not, he, we do not deserve him on this world. He's done nothing but wrong. But is it for British people she, to say that about and she does not like him. It's for anyone to say it, because we are citizens of the world. Uh, we're not telling him necessarily he shouldn't be here. We're protesting some of the policy decisions he's made. Uh, but America is our closest ally, so... Yeah, and this is not against America, this is against Trump. <laughs> then the main anti-Trump protest of the day, filling the streets of central London. Well, the American president might not be in London to see and hear these protests, but he's certainly aware of them, saying he wasn't spending more time in the capital because he'd been made to feel unwelcome. But as Donald Trump said, he believes the real British people love the American president. But those in Trafalgar Square this evening aren't the ones who love him far from it. But with a welcome from the Queen, the Prime Minister, President Trump might just not mind about the protests. Lucy Manning, BBC News. Well, the President and uh, First Lady uh, have left Windsor and they're spending the weekend in Scotland. So let's join our Scotland editor, Sarah Smith, at Turnbury. And Sarah, just talk us through what the plans are there for the weekend. Well, there's no official schedule for the president this weekend. This is being described as a private visit. He's due to land in Scotland in about 90 minutes' time, and he'll be staying here at Trump Turnbury. I think it's a pretty safe bet to assume that he's going to fit in at least one round of golf whilst he's here, because he does say that this is one of his favourite properties. Meanwhile, in Glasgow city centre right now, about 50 miles away, there is an anti-Trump protest going on. The big Scottish demonstration, though, is planned as a march through Edinburgh city centre tomorrow. The question is whether, despite all the security around here, protesters will also try and get much nearer to Turnbury in an attempt to actually be seen by the president. They've been promising what they call creative direct action. Although Police Scotland have already refused permission for that giant Trump baby balloon to be flown over the golf course tomorrow. Now, Trump, whilst he's here, has no plans to meet the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. She's been outspoken in her criticism of him in the past, and it's been reported today that he deeply dislikes her and bitches about her on the phone to Theresa May. Her deputy leader of the SNP, Keith Brown, he's going to tell that rally in Glasgow tonight that Scotland rejects Trump's politics of division and hate. But the First Minister herself, she's not planning to go to any of these anti-Trump demonstrations. Instead, this weekend, she's going to lead the Glasgow Pride March. And I assume she thinks that will send a message of its own.